Now we are going to find confidence interval in case of parametric distributions where the sample basically which is drawn is not necessarily from a normal distribution rather it can be from any other distribution as well. So here we are going to consider the case for Poisson distribution you may consider likewise for other distributions as well. So let us begin with the confidence interval for Poisson distribution. So it is a parametric bootstrap process ok. So from here on we are going to work with parametric bootstrap and we are going to find confidence interval for parameter theta. So let me first import the necessary libraries. Import numpy and from scipy.stats import poison okay so it will import the poison distribution function from the scipy library and we will also import matplotlib because we need it for the plots matplotlib dot pyplot as plt now let us consider that for the known parameter suppose your true theta true parameter is 5 so basically here we are dealing with Poisson distribution with parameter 5. Now we are going to generate Poisson data with the known parameter. So here let me mention that np.random.seed. So this is for reproducibility and data as poison dot rvs here your mu is same as your true theta okay and size is 100 so this means that we are going to generate 100 random variates from a poison distribution with mean mu that is same as true theta so from poison 5 you are going to generate a random sample of size 100 so first of all if you remember from the theory that we are going to generate a random sample from the known distribution now we are going to estimate this theta and afterwards we are going to generate the bootstrap samples suppose say 10000 bootstrap samples from poison distribution with this new estimated theta so let us write the code for that so first of all we will define a function function to estimate theta from a sample okay so what is the command so here we are going to use define estimate okay estimate underscore parameter estimate parameter and here we will write data so this is the name of the function estimate param underscore parameter and when we execute this it will return the mean np dot mean of this data so this is a function that estimates theta in this case uh, the mean of the Poisson distribution will be found out and it will be used further Now let us also specify the number of bootstrap samples that we need. So let it be 10,000. Now we are going to write the function for function to calculate your confidence intervals. Okay. So for this let me write define calculate underscore bootstrap. for ci let me wrote write this so data estimator and the size would be n so here what we are doing we are basically writing this as the name of the function okay and this would be the input the data set with uh, for which the confidence interval has to be calculated 
and this function it takes data as the input and give you mean as the output as we have defined earlier and n is the number of bootstrap samples that we need so for here we are going to calculate parameter hat theta hat right so here we will write we are calling the function over here estimator data and your bootstrap parameters bootstrap underscore parameters so let it be estimator so now we are going to take bootstrap samples from poisson distribution with this new theta hat parameter hat okay and for each bootstrap sample we are going to find the mean so we are going to apply this function that we have defined and it will be finally stored in this bootstrap parameters so np dot random dot poison parameter underscore hat and size would be the same as the length of the data set that you have right for i or maybe just underscore in range n so here we are generating bootstrap samples from this poison distribution poison with theta hat and size would be this and then we are applying this estimator function to each sample next we are going to sort them out in an ascending order as we have done for the non parametric case also sort sorted parameters would be found out using your np dot sort function so here we will write bootstrap underscore parameters okay once you have sorted it out you will write the command for your lower bound so lower bound again we have seen earlier for the non parametric also so sorted parameters here we will take the integer part of this 0 0.025 because it is 95% confidence interval so 2.5% of this n okay so that will be your lower bound so alpha by 2 the alpha by 2 would be left to this lower bound and again for the upper bound as you can see 1 minus alpha by 2 would be there so that basically means 97.5 so sorted parameters 0 0.0975 of your n okay and this function would return the lower bound upper bound and your sorted parameters okay now we will write confidence interval for theta so here theta lower theta upper and your sorted parameters So here we are calling that function to calculate the confidence interval for theta. Okay. So this one calculate bootstrap CI that we have defined earlier. So just use from here. Data and here we will write estimate parameters the one that we used initially estimate parameter. So we defined it above. The same thing will be called here. So here I think I have to write the spelling parameters. E is missing. Again here. Now, I'm sorry. Once we have calculated everything, now we can print 
the confidence interval print 95% confidence interval for theta so first of all we will print the lower bound So here sorry it will be stored in theta lower theta underscore lower and we are going to specify the formatting so it will be 2f up to two decimal places so again here you will have the upper bound and here it will be theta upper So let us execute this. Oh, bootstrap. Even a single mistake can give you big error. So here it will be 95% confidence interval is the lower bound is 4.51 to 4.65. So it means that you are 95% confident that when you are sampling from Poisson distribution with parameter 5, so your confidence interval would be from 4.51 to 4.65. Okay, so this is how you can see that it is easy to calculate for any other distributions as well. In theory, we learn only about normal distribution. However, in real life you might be coming across other distributions or maybe sometimes you do not even have an idea that from which distribution it is it coming so in such cases non-parametric cases would be used which we have already studied and if you know the distribution and then you want to find the confidence interval in such cases you can follow these steps okay so i'm just showing you for the poison case and here i have done for your single parameter or a single sample that you have taken now suppose you want to print the histogram also as we have done for earlier cases so let me reuse this and try to have the histogram as well so you can sh see it visualize it properly so here let me write the correct term so plot here it will be for sorted parameters okay and number of bins is this bootstrap ratios it will be parameter values for theta on x-axis parameter values frequency bootstrap distribution of parameter theta of parameter then we are going to draw a vertical line for the lower bound so here it would be not theta you can see we have um, stored it in theta lower okay so you have to make these basic changes and theta upper sorry it will be theta and here you will have again so i'm missing e every time and sorry here it would be 0.975 that is why it is coming incorrect yeah sorry so that is why i was wondering like why it is not covering your 95 percent of the histogram so sorry for this so it will be 0.975 okay i by mistake i wrote an additional zero over here so now you can see how it covers your 95 percent confidence interval and it is because you generated from poison with parameter 5 and here we have obtained the interval as 4.51 to 5.38 so now let us work for the case when you have to find out the confidence interval for the difference of two means confidence interval for difference of two means so 
So again, we will be importing NumPy as NP and from SciPy dot starts import poison distribution and we will also import matplotlib. So now let us set the parameters for this the two poison distributions okay so let the first theta 1 can be your suppose 40 and theta 2 that is the true parameter again for the second one is 35. So the first sample will be drawn from poison distribution with this parameter like poison 40 and here it will be drawn from poison 35. Now we can specify the sample sizes also. So n can be n and m both of them can be 100. And the total number of bootstrap samples, let that be 10,000. Now we are going to generate the original samples from poison. So here let me use data 1 as poison so here mu would be same as theta 1 and here we can write rv s in bracket n so we are generating basically random sample of size 100 from poison theta 1 that is 40 Again, same way you can write for data 2 also. It would be mu equal to theta 2 under dot rvs m. Now, you will write the function to estimate the difference of means. So, you will define this function estimate difference data 1 data 2 so this is the name of the function that is estimate difference and it will have this data set two data sets of here that we have mentioned so for these two confidence interval has to be calculated and we, it will return the means of these two np dot mean for the first sample and subtract np dot mean for the second one so now you can write the function to calculate confidence interval for the difference of means right so the usual procedure is also in this way that you have two populations two known distributions and from there you have taken two different samples and using this sample data you estimate the parameters theta 1 and theta 2 theta 1 hat and then you are going to generate suppose 10,000 bootstrap samples from this new f theta 1 and uh, again similarly you would estimate you will be taking bootstrap samples from this f theta 2 right you will calculate mean of each of them and then the difference of the two means will be calculated. Now we are going to define this function for here. So define calculate this name of the function calculate bootstrap underscore ci. So here data 1, data 2 and estimator and n. Right. So again name of the function the two data sets with which we have to work and this is the function that we have defined over here that takes the two data sets as the input and then it will return the difference of their means now we will write bootstrap underscore differences so we are initializing an array of zeros of size 10,000 now for i in range we are initiating a for loop 10 for 10,000 times and for each sample it would 
calculate so it, here resample one is np dot random dot choice so we are doing sampling with replacement so here the first data set the size would be same as the length of the day first data set or maybe i could just write as uh, n only because this is what we have already defined and replace is equal to true it means that we are going to consider sampling with replacement now again resample 2 for the second one so np dot random data 2 so here the size would be m that we have defined we can just directly write 100 also so replace is equal to true so for you have initiated a for loop and for each iteration a bootstrap sample would be generated from this data 1 and data 2 with with replacement it will be done and then it will be stored these here so i will just write another an extra thing so bootstrap differences so what it will do bootstrap differences so we have initialized this so here it would be estimated and in bracket you will write resample 1 and resample 2 so it means that this estimator function that we have defined initially it will be applied to these two resample data sets and the result would be stored in this bootstrap differences after this we will sort them so sorted differences sorted differences would be here np dot sort the bootstrap differences that you have found out it's the array now again lower bound and upper bound has to be written lower bound would be So here in teacher 0 0.025 into n okay and upper bound here again will be sorted underscore differences and here it would be the integer part of 0 0.975 into n okay finally it would return your lower bound, upper bound and the sorted differences so finally let us write the confidence interval for the difference of the two means so mean underscore diff for the lower one and then it will be for mean difference for the upper bound and you will also have the sorted differences so this will be same as so here it will be using and calling the function that we have defined earlier calculate underscore bootstrap underscore ci okay and here it will be for data 1 comma data 2 and the sorted differences sorry it will not be for sorted difference it will be for this one estimate difference the sorted differences will store it estimate difference and n So let us see what is your mean difference for the lower one. So I'm just not giving the entire command for this, but rather it is 0 0.979 and uh, difference 
this 4.32 difference of the two means okay so you have obtained that 95% confidence interval for the difference of the two means would lie between 0.979 or 98 to 4.32. So, it will be sorted differences here. difference of means here it will be at mean underscore difference underscore lower and this one would be the upper one so you can see that it goes from approximately from 0.98 so you can see it's very near your 1 and it goes up till 4.32 okay so the difference of the two means lie between these two endpoints so likewise you can calculate when you have your ratio of the two variances. So, now let us similarly write the code for the confidence interval for difference of two for the ratio of the two variances when the populations are poison distributions, okay, poison populations. So, let me just write ratio of variances. So, most of these steps would be same with just the difference here that we are going to calculate your variance. So, maybe I could quickly show you how it is done. So, some steps would be definitely same or I just I will copy this and we will keep ok. Let me copy till here and see what are the difference. So, first of all we are going to import the necessary libraries. Then our parameters suppose here we can make it like 30 and 35 the size of the two samples let them be 100 only and 10,000 and now we are going to generate a random sample from these two poison distributions. Once you have generated the data from the two populations, what you will do? You will define a function to estimate the ratio of variance. So, let me define that function, function to estimate the ratio of variances for this define estimate underscore ratio and here in bracket we would write data 1 data 2 okay and what it will return it will return the ratio of so it will calculate the variance for each data set and divide them np dot where for data 2 once you have done this, now you will write the function to calculate confidence interval for ratio of the variances. So, here we can probably make use of this, we will make the changes wherever necessary. So, here we will write calculate boot, we are defining this function calculate bootstrap underscore. So, here data 1 and data 2 would be the input estimator. So, basically we are calling this function that takes the two data sets and it will return the ratio of their variances. Bootstrap ratio, so let me just write we are initializing an array of zeros over here and for each i a sample would be taken and we will be doing it with replacement from the from the data set that we have generated from poison 30 and size will be 100 in each of these and again here we will have bootstrap ratio 
so here ratios it will be estimated so it, we are calling this function right and it will return the ratio of the corresponding variance and it will be stored in this array now we are going to sort these the ratios that we have obtained so here also we will write so lower bound and upper bound so everywhere you are replacing differences by the ratios because that is the variable that you have used for storing it once you have obtained this you can now finally find the confidence interval so for this variance so the lower bound would be this and let me use variance underscore ratio underscore upper and your sorted ratios as calculate bootstrap so probably i can use the same thing so you calculate bootstrap estimator we know estimate ratio and n so now let us see what do you have here it is 0.431 and let us see what is the upper bound it is going till 0.89 so if we want to just visually see how it is working obviously it will be a way to cross check whether the values that you have calculated is correct or not if you have made any mistake like earlier we saw right so it is just a quick way to check sorted ratios would come over here and here it would be not the difference of the means but maybe you can write the ratio values ratio of where frequency is there bootstrap for ratio of variances so here this will be the lower bound you will draw a vertical line at this and a vertical line at the upper bound also so let us run this yeah so you can see that it is fine you discovering 95% of this histogram of the ratio of the variances and it is a bit skewed also that actually we have seen earlier also in case of ratio of variances from your non parametric setup also so you can see that it is a bit skewed to the right side so this is how you calculate the confidence interval so with this we complete this chapter as well as this course i hope you learn something and gain certain knowledge about the topics of statistics the basics that we started with the data collection then we moved on to your summarization visualization the next we studied about the sampling distribution concept and we saw that once you understand the concept of sampling distribution you know the distributions then you can keep on simply applying them in further results whenever you are dealing with statistical inference right in confidence interval estimation we have seen how do we reuse those results from sampling distribution also in hypothesis testing we use them so everywhere it will be used so after that we studied the point estimation for mle and method of moments we learned about unbiasedness and in addition to that we learn how to deal with the estimation when we have missing data missing observations in your data set so we learned about em algorithm next we move to the hypothesis testing so we studied about hypothesis testing for 3 weeks where the first two weeks were about the case when you are sampling from normal distribution and the last one is again the bootstrap case and lastly we learned about the confidence interval estimations okay both from parametric setup that is your normal or maybe for any other uh, distribution as we have seen using bootstrap or even for the non parametric cases also 
सो थैंक यू ऑल फॉर जॉइनिंग दिस कोर्स थैंक यू